everyone, Joanne from Art Resin here, and today I have artist Jamie Merrithew in the studio with us. And Jamie, I'm so happy to have you here. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you for inviting no me. No problem. Jamie is a Mandela artist, and just to let everyone know, I found Jamie on TikTok. So I was scrolling through TikTok, and I was so happy to find that you use Art Resin. So I contacted you. And here you are. So what are we going to do today? Um, so I thought I'd show you how I make my resin pendants. So I you make their bases out of resin and then I put a coating here. on them after I paint them. Um, so we'll go through that process. And then I thought for some fun to make something a little bit bigger, we can do this center spiral design on some round wood panels like and this. I'll teach you how, how we do this. This is so exciting and your work is absolutely gorgeous and I'm not sure if I'll be able to recreate this but I am so looking forward to trying. You're gonna do so fine. It's We're just gonna have fun. That's awesome. Well, let's get started. Okay, Jamie, so we're gonna get started with our first project. We're gonna make some of these beautiful pendants. And uh, do you wanna walk us through the process? Sure, so um, the first thing that's good to know is that you can do them in any color. Uh, I usually do the black, that's what we're gonna do here today because the color really pops really nicely. Mm -hmm. And when you put the top layer of resin over, it pops even more. Yes. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, but I've also done them in white and in clear as well. So there's lots of different options. You could probably do any color that you want really. And I just use acrylic paints to tint the resin as well. So we'll just put a little bit of the uh, acrylic paint into the resin and then we'll pour them into this mold that I got off of Amazon and then they'll be ready to go after they cure. Then we paint the design. Okay, perfect. So should we get started? Because we're ready to measure and mix. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, mix the resin. So I'm going to take equal parts of the hardener and of the resin, mix them in these little uh, measuring cups. It's hard to see on camera, but they actually have little measurements on them. So just like the little medicine cups. And uh, I could mix them in a large silicone beaker like this, but it's a little bit larger than what we're gonna need. We're actually only gonna use one teaspoon of each of the hardener and the resin on this. So we're not gonna use a lot of resin at all. So I'll mix this in here. Try and make sure I get as much of this into the other container as I can. All right. I think this is mixed Perfect. And so good to go. Now we're going to add our tint. Yes. So we're just going to put a little tiny, tiny black of a uh, piece of black paint. Mm -hmm. um, I just get black acrylic paint from the dollar store. This is what I use for all of my base coats on my large canvases and stuff too, because uh, not enough of it's showing through that I have to really worry about finding a fancy black one. And just a couple drops Perfect. like that. Yes because I don't even need it to be solid black. I just want it to have a darker background so that the colors pop nicely, right? Mm -hmm. So just give that a stir. So you can use acrylic paint um, to tint the resin. You can use our line of resin tint as well, which has uh, been formulated for our resin. You can use um, powdered pigment. You can use a variety of things to tint your resin. Um, but no matter what you use, it's always best to put no more than 6% of the total combined volume. So we've got 10 mil here, five uh, resin, five hardener, so that's 10. Yeah. So I wouldn't add more than like half a mil of, yeah. um, of colorant. And don't be alarmed too if you do pull your um, your resin out of the mold after 24 hours and it is a little bit flexible, it just hasn't fully cured yet. So if you leave it for a few more days, um, it'll it'll harden up. Yeah. yeah. And depending how thick it is, if it's very thick, it could even take like a week or two weeks to really, really fully cure. Yeah, I've yeah. noticed that with a couple of mine. I'll take them and I'll put them where I store the blanks and then when I go to pull them out a week later, they're nice and rock Absolutely, hard. Yeah. 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 So this is ready to pour into the mold Good. then. I'm not gonna fill it up all the way. So I don't keep pouring as it reaches the corners, as it reaches the edges, because I want it to self, do the self-leveling mm -hmm. thing, because that's when I'm gonna get that nice little lip there. So these are probably a couple of millimeters thick. Yes. I would think, okay? Yeah. I think that's all we're gonna get out of this mixture. And then we'll do just a really, really quick torch. Um, I have over torched a couple of times and I have lost a couple of these. There's chunks that have kind of come out of there from it just being too heated up. Right. Um, so I kind of went into that knowing that this was all trial and error for me, but I've learned very quickly. If I am going to use the torch, do it very, very quickly. Yes, yeah, the torch can be hard on silicone molds for sure. Um, but if you want to prolong the life of your molds, you can certainly use a heat gun yeah. as well. Okay, perfect. So we're done here. Now we are going to uh, let this cure 
And uh, once they're dry, then we'll pop them out, mm -hmm. right? And then we're gonna paint a beautiful mandala design on, yeah. and then put another clear coat of resin on top. Yep. Right, and, and then? And then once that clear coat uh, dries, then we can glue on the vials, bales, the hooks. hooks for your necklace. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> the necklace that sounds great. Yeah. Okay, so should we cover this up then? Yes. So we wanna protect it from any dust that might land in it while the resin is still wet. We and we'll be back in 24 hours. So we're back, it's been 24 hours, our resin has cured overnight and we are ready to transform these into these beautiful pendants of Jamie's here. So I'm so excited to learn how to do this. Jamie? Yay! These are really, really fun. I love doing little tiny things. It's fun to create some really delicate detail and especially when you see it come out and it actually looks pretty. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very gratifying. These are very gratifying to Awesome. Paint. Let's get started. Okay. So we're just gonna pop our resin castings out of the mold. And I still go fairly slowly, even though it's been the full 24 hours, because mm -hmm. they will still be a little flexible. Mm -hmm. There we go. So the first thing we need to do to get a mandala on there is to find the center. Right. So one method is to get a tape measure or a ruler and measure it all out and try and get that exact center. But I am way too lazy for that. <laughs> So I actually have this flexible mold. This is a mold by a company called Happy Dotting Company, mm -hmm. and they create these molds for painting mandalas on stones to draw the guidelines on. Ah. So what I do is I flip it upside down, and then I put the pendant in here, and just try and kind of evenly line it up with the different markings that are already on the, the stencil. Template, yeah. Yes. And then I'll flip it over, and then the center will be marked because then I'll just take a really tiny tool and what I'll do is just put a little tiny dot right in the middle there so that when I pull this out and remove the stencil now, I've got my center. That is fantastic, what a great tip. Super easy, mm -hmm. it's a lot faster and a lot less frustrating than sitting there trying to find the exact center with a ruler and moving it all over the place, right? right? Yeah. yeah, especially when you're doing a whole tray of them, I can imagine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So craft acrylic paint, a mm -hmm. lot of my acrylic paint comes from Dollarama. Mm -hmm. I love the DecoArt craft acrylic paint that I can get there. It's a really nice matte finish and mm -hmm. they've got some beautiful colors. Um, but otherwise, I'll just use anything that you can find at Michael's or Walmart, uh, nice and easy. So we're gonna start with red. And the center dot is the largest dot that I'm going to be placing on this. All of the rest are going to be significantly smaller, so I only need a very small number of tools. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to dip, and then I'm going to still try and kind of look around to make sure that I'm not leaning on one end of that mm -hmm. center dot, that I'm getting that little tiny dot as close to the center as I can. You're looking good. Yeah, so sometimes kind of getting those different angles helps, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes getting down here really helps. Other yeah. times you kind of have to get up top and just kind of take a look. The nice thing is, is the worst thing that's going to happen is it's going to be the wrong size. Mm -hmm. And because the resin is so smooth, it's super easy to wipe off that dry dot and start over again. Great point. Or you can just grab a slightly larger tool and dot right over it and it'll help kind of fix that stuff. And adjust, yeah. yeah. It's never gonna be completely perfect, mm -hmm. but there's other adjustments you can make on your design if you start to see it's a little off center. Right, yeah, yeah, that looks good. So are we gonna do like a swirl or what sort of pattern do you have in mind for this one? I thought it would be cool to show um, more of the petal design where it looks like there's actual little flower petals and maybe some of the swoops because between the spirals, the petals and the swoops, those are really the three main components that I use anyway in pretty much every single dot mandala that I do. So if you learn those three, then you can pretty much in your go in and create anything you'd like. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. And we'll get started adding the next couple of rows. So I noticed um, that these have a natural kind of lip on them, don't they? Yes. That's the side that we're gonna yes. paint on. Yes, thank you for mentioning mm -hmm. that. So we always want that lip to be up mm -hmm. because I'm gonna paint the design on and then when I put the resin on, it's gonna create that wonderful dome yes. and help kind of keep the resin in there yeah. and make it a lot easier without worrying about dripping or anything. Exactly, so. it's like a natural kind of like uh, vessel for the resin. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Now I use really tiny tools mm -hmm. for this. So my favorite tool is a micro dotter. Oh. I call it a micro dotter. Technically, it's a clay sculpture tool, but mm -hmm. you can get them on Amazon or pretty much anywhere that you get clay sculpture. For the first little bit, we're going to do just dip and dot, dip and dot. 
Just like when we did the spiral, I'm gonna lay out my first row the same way by dotting at 12 o'clock around the center dot, spin it around 12 o'clock again. Making sure I clean off my tool very regularly so mm -hmm. the paint doesn't build up too much. That one actually needs to be a little bit bigger. And then at 12 o'clock again. And then spin and 12 o'clock again. Once I get the four directions on there, north, south, east, west, mm -hmm. now I'm gonna go in and just start literally dividing any blank space in half. It's amazing when you look at the finished product and you're like wondering how on earth did that, you know, come to be and it's so perfect, but it's a formula, isn't yes. it? You start the same way. Yeah, every piece starts the same way. Yeah. And you can make it as simple or as detailed, I guess, as you as you like, right? Absolutely. As the space will allow. And you can go with any size, right? Like if I was to do a slightly larger dot, then I would potentially have some room. If I can just show this one as an example, see how that one has little tiny gold dots oh, in between yeah. the red? So that was that effect would be formed by instead of using this tiny tool for the orange, I'd use a larger one, mm -hmm. space them out a little bit more mm -hmm. and purposely leave space mm -hmm. in there. So it's amazing how just something so simple like that can change the entire look of a design yeah. um, compared to keeping it super compact. Gosh, the possibilities endless. really, really are endless. And that's the, that's the fun part, right? You know, I've got a lot of people that ask me, you know, what should I do to practice? Pick one design, just a single design. If you fall in love with the spiral, do the spiral over and over and over and over again and just change up the colors and then start adding more detail in between different things. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can build on every single one of these patterns and they will all look different mm -hmm. if you just switch up the color. And changing the size of your dotting tool. Yes. yes. Adding gold, there's yeah. so, many, so many variations. Well, and changing the size of your dotting tool too is gonna basically change the number of segments you have in your mandala too, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. you can have a completely look, different looking mandala, exactly the same colors, just with the different sizes. Okay, so I'm gonna do one more row of these dots that are all the same size, and then I will build out into the petal pattern. So I'm gonna keep following the colors of the rainbow. All right, so I'm going to now start building the pattern to do some petals. So I'm gonna start with a fairly small dot, but I'm only gonna do every other space. Okay, so to create these petal designs, we do a technique called walking the dots. So up until now, I have done dip and dot, mm -hmm. dip and dot. This time, we're going to do some of the dip and dot, but then walking the dots is actually dip once and then dot a few times without reloading the tool. Okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the peak of my petal. So the nice pointy top. If you want really pointy petal shapes, you either need to increase the size of the dot that you're putting at the peak or move the peak out a little bit further from that dot. Okay. So not have it go quite as tight up next to that dot. So I always do the peak dots first. Okay. And I'm doing it with a larger tool than what I'm gonna do the walking dots with. So I do this just to make sure that my petals point in the direction that I want them to go. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I also dot across from me to hopefully create those straight lines. So I've dipped the tool in the paint and now I'm going to, oh my gosh, just like that. that. So you're kind of creating, like it's, it's creating a fade, I guess, right? Yes. By that. That. Oh my gosh. Okay, so see how they just gradually get smaller and mm -hmm. smaller? So you want to make sure you don't put too much paint on and um, to clean off the tool on a very, very regular basis when you're doing this. Uh, you need a steady hand. And again, there's no rules. Mm -hmm. You want to do one, you want to do five, you want to do them in reverse. So you want to start walking them from the bottom out towards the peak. Mm -hmm. You can do it any way you want to. And that's the fun stuff to explore. And there's so many different ways that you can arrange these patterns to create 3D effects too because of the, the size difference in the walking dots. 
All right, so I'm gonna keep going with another color. We're gonna do another row of the walking dots. So, actually. So this time I'm gonna use the same tool that I did for the peak dots in the blue, but this time I'm gonna use it for the peak dots and the walking dots. I'm not gonna to switch to the micro dotter for the walking dots. And I can start to feel that I'm starting to go up the side a mm -hmm. little bit. Um, so this is where I start to kind of really watch for, um, am I going up the side at the same spot? Like, am I actually centered on this thing to see if there's any spacing issues that I might come across that might make it look like it's really off center. I see. If you find that it's off center, on the side that it's off center, you just move your dot out a little bit further. Once the design is done, you will never notice that this dot is a sixteenth of an inch mm -hmm. out further to the edge than the others. Yes. So you can camouflage an awful lot of spacing issues. Um, it's a huge thing that I talk about a lot on my lives is give yourself the opportunity to finish the piece before you criticize it and throw it away. Yes. Because once you build it and it's done, chances are you're gonna go back and you're not even gonna be able to find the thing that bothered you so much exactly. and there's an a hour huge, before. A huge difference between staring at it close up and, and standing back and taking a look. Yes. Gives you a completely different perspective. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this a little bit different, because why not? So I'm gonna do every other one in the purple. Oops. and then I'm gonna do the other ones in the pink. This is absolutely gorgeous. I am gonna grab some gold in here for the last bit of detail. That gold looks perfect. And there we go. Oh my gosh, She's Jamie. done. That gold is the perfect finishing touch. It's amazing how something just so little and tiny and subtle can make a big difference, but we're done. This is now ready to dry. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Yep, so about a half an hour, it should be ready to go, and then we can pour some resin. Amazing. So our next step is getting resin. All right. So we've got our resin, we're ready to mix up. Yeah, and we're gonna mix a very tiny amount. Now, of course, this is gonna vary differ, uh, depending on how many of these you make at any given time, but because we're just doing the one, we're gonna mix just a really tiny amount here. Perfect. Okay. And that's the great thing about our resin, you can mix, as long as you stick to the one to one ratio, you can mix a teeny tiny amount like this or a larger amount. Okay, I think we're good, we're nice and clear. So let's bring the pendant back. Mm -hmm. I usually sit it, when I'm curing a, uh, or pouring a whole bunch of these pendants, I actually use a lot of these cups turned upside down on a tray. Yes. Um, because then once these cups, once they're balancing on these cups, then I can at least pick up the tray and move it without right. some, anything too major happening, or I can move all the little cups. Mm -hmm. But it's nice because it's a small enough thing to set it on so that the edge still kind of comes over. So if I'm over pour by accident, I'm not going to seal my paint. Yes. Tin shut, right? Exactly, um, yeah. And instead of pouring, what I usually do is I usually go with my toothpick, oh. or my tooth, uh, that's not, nothing has to do with the tooth with this one, is it? Popsicle stick. <laughs> and just kind of spoon it out. What a great tip. And then you can really control the amount of resin that you're, that yeah. you're putting on there. Because I want to be really, really careful that it's not going to go over that edge, mm -hmm. right? Fantastic. So we're going to let this cure now. We're going to cover it up. Uh, actually, no, we're going to oh, torch it. Oh, we're going to torch it, yes, because yes. there are a few bubbles in there. Okay. Okay. Give it a torch. Okay, so I think I got it all. We'll take a look from a couple different angles to yep. make sure. It really helps to look in the light to see if you've missed anything, but that yeah. looks amazing, Jamie. I looks think you've got good. it. And it stayed in there. Mm -hmm. Everything stayed where we want it to be. So now Perfect. we just have to let it cure for 24 hours and it'll be ready to have the hook glued on the back. Um, but instead of waiting for this particular one to cure, I actually have one that is cured that just doesn't have it glued on. So we can cover this one and yes. put it aside and then we'll grab the other and I'll show you how I finish off the rest of it. Sounds good. So I'm just gonna cover this up to prevent any dust from getting in. Okay, so the first thing I do is I have three different colors that I could put for the bales on the back of the necklace pendant. Mm -hmm. So I lay all three of them out, unless I are, have already decided and built one of these colors into the piece. I lay them out and just kind of place the piece on top so I can see which one of these I like the best for the colors. 
You can buy all kinds of different colors of these. You can get these on Amazon. You can get a couple hundred of them for about $10. Oh, amazing. Um, so I'm gonna use the gold. Yeah, I agree, that's the best. It makes it punch yeah. a little better, especially yeah. with the yellow, right? Yeah, it really makes the yellow pop. So what I wanna do is I want to have that sitting there, but I also want to kind of plan where that is gonna line up with for the rest of the mm -hmm. design. So I know that that look keeps the paw print fairly straight. Yes, yeah. Um, when you have something that doesn't have the paw print, it's just a circle, it's a lot easier to pick a spot. <laughs> um, I use a tube of Gorilla Glue. Okay. And I just put a little bit of it on the vial itself and then I just pick this up and literally just hold it there until it starts to cure. Doesn't usually take very long. So once I put the glue on and I know that it's set, then I usually flip it upside down for a little bit, let it dry for about a half an hour mm -hmm. just to make sure glue doesn't get on anything. Uh, but then you're good to go. And the most fun part is when you've done a whole bunch of them, just like when you go shopping and you come home and you wanna see all of your stuff again, is just get it all with its all, right. all its buddies and just see them all together. Oh, admire your collection yeah. here. And get some inspiration for the next bunch that you wanna try, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. They are so gorgeous. And Jamie, I am so grateful to you for coming in today and showing us how you create your beautiful Mandela pendants. And you gave us so many tips and tricks on uh, different color combinations and patterns and uh, you know even the color of the pendants themselves so I appreciate it so much I'm so glad you invited me thank you, you know, so much you for having so me here welcome. this has been so much fun oh. okay Jamie on to the next project now I am so excited and I'm not gonna lie a little bit nervous <laughs> about this uh, Mandela panel here but it is so beautiful do you want to explain what the process is? Sure, so we're going to try and replicate this kind of a spiral design. Um, we've got eight inch wood panels mm -hmm. that we're gonna do. So we're not going to do these bands of colors or the gold in the corner, Okay. but we will get that spiral in there. So things that you wanna keep in mind, whether you're painting on canvas or wood or stone or anything, is that uh, most of the time you're gonna wanna have some guidelines. Now okay. for stone and everything, you can get some stencils that will actually draw the guidelines on oh, there for okay. you, have all of your sections there. But on wood or canvas, then I always draw my own. Now, okay. a lot of Dot Mandela artists get very, very meticulous with their measurements. And I think I frustrate them a lot <laughs> because I don't. Um, okay. Now, I am taking a course in sacred geometry, so eventually I would like to work those ratios into my guidelines, mm. like some Dot artists do, but I'm definitely not there yet. Right now, my guidelines are there to help me keep straight, keep my patterns where I want them to be, and to let me know that I'm on track, even if I'm not really paying attention to them. I kind of just like them in the background, they're my safety net. Right. So um, when you're painting on any wood or anything, the, uh, the thing that I find the best is a watercolor pencil crayon. Okay. Because you can erase it off, but mm. then at the end, anything that doesn't come off, you can just use like a white Q-tip and just wipe it off. And so it'll get smart. rid of your guidelines, nice That's... and easy. Amazing. So we've got a little bucket of tools here. Um, I use a combination of a few different things. I have a clay sculpture tool um, and actually a bunch of other sets that are clay sculpture or nail art tools. Mm. And then I also have a set by a company called DIY Mandala Stones. They look like these little pencils and they're all different sizes. So every end has a different size. So, oh, okay, so the circle on the end will make a dot. Exactly, so you dip the end into mm -hmm. the paint and then place the dot. Now, in a perfect world, you don't want, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't want the tool to actually hit the surface because that can create some suction oh, with the paint and it can okay. actually misshape your dots. What you want to do is get enough paint on the tool so that when you kind of hover near the surface, the surface makes contact with the paint and pulls the paint off of the tool as opposed to you applying pressure to force the paint onto right. the surface. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. I can imagine if you put too much pressure, the paint can kind of spread and Yeah, yes, and heaven forbid distort. if there's a little bubble in there and it mm. pops out the side, it's infuriating when that happens. It happens all the time though. Yeah. So one of the other things that I'm gonna make sure that I show you is what we do if we make a mistake Perfect. or if there's something we wanna change because it is not the end of the world. Um, we just cover it up with a little black paint, same as our base color. It's a lot of the reason why I use black base mm -hmm. coats on most of my paintings. Yeah. Because it gives me that ability to hide oh, anything. Good, that's a relief. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we can make a couple mistakes and fix them. Absolutely. Okay, good. Absolutely. Um, so you need um, a watercolor pencil crayon or a charcoal pencil, um, and a, a ruler, an eraser, mm -hmm. and a compass okay. as well. 
perfect. And then these panels here, these are wood panels and we painted them with acrylic paint. Yes, right? yeah, okay. just black uh, acrylic paint. So, um, and we're gonna do rainbow colors, just like in here, we've got eight rainbow colors. I put them in the little paint pots because it makes life a little easier so I'm not constantly cleaning out palettes and dealing with all the gumminess oh, on the smart. bottles and everything. And this is also just a regular acrylic paint? Yep, uh, these are acrylic paints that I got from Dollarama. Okay, Yep. so just so, craft, craft paint. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So the thing to keep in mind is when you're using regular craft acrylic paints, when it's thinner paints, the larger your dots get, the bigger the chance that as they dry, they're gonna crack. I see. Right? So okay. it's wanting to keep an eye on how thin your paints are mm -hmm. and really getting to know your paints. So like I, I tell people all the time, you need to get to know your tools and you need to get to know your paints. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do that is to just paint as much as you possibly can. Yes. Because then you're gonna say, okay, well that pink, I can't do large dots with it the way it is. Right. So then I need to either mix in another paint that's maybe a bit thicker or add in a bit of pouring medium. That could help kind of bind it together so it doesn't crack. And in the event that one of these did crack, mm -hmm. can you touch it up afterwards? Yes, so I okay. would go back over and what I would probably do at that point, that would help me identify which paint might be a little bit too watery that I didn't pick up on. Mm -hmm. So I would go back in, put in just one or two drops of pouring medium and put another dot completely over top okay. and see if that solves the problem. Right. And if it doesn't, then we just keep going with trial and error until we find something. <laughs> Love it. Okay, I'm ready to get started, I think. All right, perfect. So we will um, start by dividing uh, this in half. So the first thing that I do is I just go in with my ruler. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this with a round um, surface that you're painting on. Okay. If you really want to make life easier for yourself, get a piece of paper, trace the circle onto that piece of paper, fold that piece that cut out the circle, mm -hmm. sorry, then fold it in quarters and then snip off just the little corner. Then when you lay it back down on top of the surface, your center is marked. Right. Okay. I don't like to make life easy for myself. I <laughs> feel like I specifically go out of my way to make it difficult. So we're gonna do this with the ruler. All right. <laughs> so I just kind of move my ruler up and down. When you get to the edge of the circle and to the widest part of the circle, you start to kind of watch where the lines are on your ruler so you can tell if you've actually started to center it or not. So once it looks like it's at around the right spot, mm -hmm. I am going to first mark halfway and then I'm gonna draw my first line. So that halfway is just what I can line up when I turn and do the second line. Okay, gotcha. That okay. makes sense, yeah. yeah. Once I've got that marked, then I turn my ruler and I usually turn the piece as well. And then what I like to do is the long line on the ruler for say the five inch or the four inch mark, I line that up on the line I've already mm -hmm. drawn and that helps me keep it perpendicular. Right. And then draw my next line. So I really only have to measure that once, right? The edge and then my center point. So then I go in with my compass and I will place it in the center so it doesn't have a super sharp end on it. Mm -hmm. um, try and keep your pencil super sharp as well and don't worry about specific measurements. And then I kind of go out to the widest part first. Be and the reason I do this is because if I go out here and this is really off, I'm gonna see it right away. Right. And I've only got a couple guidelines down. So if okay. I've got it really off, then I have not too big of a mess to fix up. If I got to that point and realized that my last line was super, super off, mm. I'd just paint over it and start over again. Right. Right. So this gives me a quick little look at how I did with finding my center. That Which, is such a good tip. Pretty darn close. It's a little bit off, but not by much. Not by much. Not no. enough that's worth starting over. Okay, good. So yeah, that's why I always do the outer one first to make sure that if it's off, I have the opportunity to fix it. Good and idea. Even though we're creating the same piece, the guidelines don't need to match. These are just for just for reference points, right? The more, more ways we can give ourselves reference points, the better our spacing is gonna be. I love the way you're doing this though. It's kind of like free form, organic. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what happens, mm -hmm. right? And, and that's a thing, a thing that intimidates a lot of people when they look at a new art farm is they think that they need to know so much before they get started. You, you really don't. Or it needs to be perfect. Yeah. Yes. yeah. What's the right way to do it? Mm. The right way is doing it. Just yes. do it. Do it in a way that works for you. Yeah. yeah. And if it means that you spend more time creating and adding some more beauty to the world and heaven forbid being happier, then who cares if it's the right or wrong way? according to someone else's definition. Right. Great. I love that. So there we go. That one is ready to go. 
The next step is going to be going over it with this eraser and I just lightly erase it. I want to still be able to see the guidelines, uh, but I want to remove any of that additional waxiness that could be there because that extra waxiness could impact the shape of my dots. If I dot over top of one of these lines before I erase it, it will pinch the sides of the dots in and almost make it look like a little hourglass. I see. So you're erasing it just enough so you can still kind of see the ghost lines of, yes. as a guideline. Exactly. Yeah. So get all the shavings out of here. So I can still see them, but mm -hmm. they're much fainter. Right. Amazing. And that's it. So then we are ready to put down the first dot and start painting. All right. I think I'm ready. <laughs> all right. So we're going to put our first dot on, but the first dot is the most stressful part. So we're going to get all the stress out of the way at the very beginning, and then we're going to be able to relax and just enjoy going through the motions as we get going. Okay, the reason for that is, is that even though you've got your guidelines down, you still have to rely on your hand to bring the tool down on the spot that you want it to and keep it nice and nice and centered, right? Okay. So that's one of the reasons why we did these really small guidelines in here, that smallest circle, because if it was much bigger, you would have to guess whether or not this tool is actually in the center of that circle that you made. I see. Whereas if we do the smaller <clears throat> circle, if we center it over here, I'm going to notice that I'm way off center from my guideline. Right. Okay. okay. So I'll show you before you do your center dot. So when you dip your tool in the paint, mm -hmm. you just want to kind of have like that quarter inch covered. And then eventually that paint will snap off like that. And then we're ready to place our first dot. Okay. So you're not dunking it right in. You're just no. going up like just that little bit. Just like a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch. Yeah. Okay. Trying to keep it at as much of a 90 degree angle as you can okay. to come down. Mm -hmm. And what I try to do is when I get down to about here, this is when I kind of try to look around the piece to see if it looks like I'm kind of centered within that smallest guideline. And it does. So then, see how I'm not pressing hard down though? Right. Right? Like and you're making contact, but you're not putting pressure. Yeah. Yeah. And it even still had a little bit less paint than I expected. So see how it's a little bit spongy and mm -hmm. puckery? It hasn't covered the entire surface. Yeah, so that just tells me that I didn't have enough paint on there. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit more and then just let that kind of pull down onto that space. And sometimes I'll even take a nail dotting stylus tool oh, and I just see. kind of move it around a little Spread bit. Spread it out. Yeah just to smooth it out. The paint, very much like the resin, does a lot of self-leveling, mm -hmm. thankfully, um, but just in case. So I'm gonna clean this tool off. Always make sure if you're doing this art form that you have cloths, paper towels, something to wipe your tools off because you have okay. to clean them off a lot. Right, okay. A lot, a lot. All right, you wanna give it a shot? I sure do. All right. So this circle here is quite a bit bigger than the tool. Mm -hmm. Does that matter? No, that's okay. So what we wanted to really do is to make sure that this outer circle wasn't our only point of reference. Okay. So we don't have to line up with this circle. We mm -hmm. just wanna use that as our point of reference because any movements or off-centeredness within that circle, you're gonna be able to see them pretty clearly from top down. Okay, so we just wanna make sure it's centered. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I'm gonna okay. dip. Yay! Here comes the moment of truth. Looks good. Looks good. Well done. That's Ooh. like perfectly centered. So you got the puckering too, and that yep. happens a lot, especially when you get to the larger tools. So mm -hmm. it's um, just grab some extra paint, put okay. back in again, and just kind of add a little bit of paint to it. Okay. Oh my gosh, I get too much mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you've added the extra paint. You don't have to worry about pushing it around with that tool. You can grab one of these nail dotting stylus tools and just kind of move the paint around okay. a little bit. And that will give you a nice dot. There we go. There you go. That's perfect. Looks good. One down. One down. <laughs> So the only trade-off with these little paint pots is you do have to kind of take the paint, the, the lids off and on over and over again, but it definitely helps. Actually, we're gonna keep the red and I'm gonna use this tool. It has a little metal ball on the end, just like on the end of mine. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to dip my tool into the paint. Not a ton of paint, right? Still just kind of dip and dot dip and dot. You okay. want to be able to get into that rhythm. So you don't need to stir and scoop and kind of 
play with the paint too, too much. So dip, and then I'm gonna put my first dot up here at 12 o'clock. Okay. Just a little bit away from the center dot because I don't want the paint to run together. Then what I do is I'm gonna spin it, and then I'm gonna dot at 12 o'clock again, about the same distance away from the center dot, okay? Okay. That's gonna be it for the red for this first row because we're gonna alternate a bunch of colors to get that rainbow spin effect, okay? Perfect. So um, the reason I paint across for me is it helps me keep a straighter line. If I was to do the dots down here, we all naturally pull slightly to the left mm. or the right, and so that can kind of screw up the spacing a little bit. So I prefer to kind of always go across for me, and then I can kind of almost draw that line from my reference point. So then I call this the clock method or um, the poles, right? I'm gonna go now and do my north pole and keep spinning it until I start filling in everything in the north pole and, and it's opposite. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Yeah. It makes it really methodical. Yeah. yeah, and that's what makes it a little bit easier, especially yes. if you have that kind of brain that likes to know what order you mm -hmm. need to do things in to follow that process. Yes. All right, so I'm gonna do my entire first small circle first, then we'll do yours. Okay. Once you've got that down, you've kind of got the foundation down and the rest is gonna make a lot more sense. Okay. When you are alternating your colors around, you almost have to have a bit of a plan in your head for how are you gonna divide this up? Because I have my north and south pole, mm -hmm. but now how do I determine what colors are going to go on the east and the west, or when I turn it this way, my north and south again. Yes. So what I usually like to do is um, I've got my eight colors that I'm going to use. This is, color. I kind of count this as color number one. Halfway is gonna be color number four. Okay. Um, which means the start of the second section is gonna be color number five. Okay, so this is color number one. So in between here and here, I'm gonna put color number one, two, three, four, and then five is gonna start here, and then we'll have six, seven, eight, going the rest of the way. Okay. Okay, so I just kind of make sure that my colors are in the order that I want them to be in. I'll put the gold paint over there for now. Um, and then I'm going to go to color number five, which is the teal. Okay, and you've got them set out in the rainbow kind yeah. of pattern. Yeah, okay. and then as I use them, I just kind of go back into the rainbow and put them back where they belong so that my order is always there. Okay. It's really only in the first row, though, that it is gonna impact you. So, we go in now, same size tool, and then do those dots again. Helps me a little bit more. There. And then, Spin it around again. So then the next thing I do, to keep things simple, <laughs> um, is I now look, so I've got color number one and I've got color number five. Mm -hmm. Halfway between one and five is three. Yes. I want to use color number three now, which is yellow. And I am going to place this yellow dot halfway between the red and the blue. So I'm going to spin this this way, and it's going to go right there. This is so satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> and then spin it again, and go right here. Okay, cleaning off my tool after each color change. And when you're creating a whole bunch of them, then you clean it off even more. Mm -hmm. Then I go back and grab color number two, which is my orange. Mm -hmm. And the orange is going to go in between the red and the yellow. Yeah. And the red and the yellow again. Oops, that's a little bit big. That's okay. And then I go to number four. And then this is how we just fill in the whole rest of that first row. Okay, so now I go in with the green. Place that here. Place the green here. It makes so much sense. Right. When you look at the you know piece as a whole, it's almost a little overwhelming. How yes. how did that happen? You know, yeah. how did you know what order? How did yes. you know the spacing? How did yeah. you figure out where everything's supposed to go? Right. And so between the teal and the red, mm -hmm. I've got three colors, just like I had here. So five between five and um, color number one again, mm -hmm. which would be nine. I was number seven. So I'm going to go. That's five, six, seven, which is my purple. Oops. and I'm going to divide this space in half. 
If you were using a single color going around, which a lot of these designs, I start off that way, you would divide up this center circle the exact same way. The mm -hmm. only reason this is looking a little bit more complicated is because we're changing colors, right? Right. But if I wanted that entire inner circle to be red, I would just not change colors, but I would still go through the same process of mm -hmm. continually dividing each space in half. So, so follow, follow the same pattern. Yeah. yeah. And that works even if you're creating a larger one, mm -hmm. right? Like those bands that are around that original piece that we showed, what I did is I started with the north set and south poles, turned it north and south, and then literally just continually kept dividing each section in half over and over and over right. again until I got my spacing where I needed it to be. Amazing. Um, I've had people ask me the question of how do you know what size tool to use so that the dots are going to fit properly? And I tell them the same thing. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you don't. I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. It's this beautiful, you know, um, combination of like process and science and math and like winging it, which yes. I love. Yeah. Yeah, there's enough structure. Mm hmm but there's not too much structure, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, I like it. Okay, so what this is doing is this is laying us a really nice foundation because every dot that we lay down after this is going to be somehow lined up with what we did here. So our next row of dots, for example, is going to go, I'm just gonna cheat and I'm gonna show you the next one. This next row, just to give you the idea of where we're going, I'm with that same color, I'm just gonna put it in that, line it up with that space between the oh, red and the pink from before, right? So when we talk about points of reference, mm -hmm. right? I'm using the pink and the red that are already there mm -hmm. as the point of reference for where I put this dot. So it's in the center of those two. Right, and try to get them at about the same distance apart, right? Like the same mm -hmm. size and the same distance from the previous ones. That dot looks awful. So. Let's quickly, before we jump into yours, let's quickly show how to do uh, deal with a mistake. Okay. So this one here looks like a soupy mess to me. So what I'm gonna do is I've got these nail dotting stylus tools that have a silicone brush on the end. Um, a Q-tip, a cotton swab, a piece of tissue on the end of your finger, anything can work. I just like these because they're um, a little more precise. Okay. And I can get in really tiny with the detail. Right? Like if I went in there with my finger and a Kleenex, I might as well just start over the whole section. Yes, yeah. Right? So I slowly kind of pull that paint oh, to just kind okay. of pull it off. Mm -hmm. And then I usually wipe my hand, wipe it on my hands. And then we just grab a little tiny paintbrush and a little bit of the black paint. Just a tiny little bit of black paint. And we just cover that over. And you never know. Never know. So then we could continue on alternating our colors again, mm -hmm. right? So I'd put the red dot here between the red and the orange, the orange between the orange and the yellow, and mm -hmm. so on all the way around. And then by the time I'm done those other ones, that little black spot will be dry. We try. And I can go in and replace that pink dot and be ready to move on. Good tip. You ready to try it on yours? I think so. Yeah? Yeah. Perfect. So okay. I'll help you out with the colors. I'll help you out with the tool sizes. Any questions, I'm going to focus on you. And then once you're comfortable, then we'll start painting together and just build this out. Perfect, okay. that sounds good. All right. Okay, so I've got my tool here. Mm -hmm. and I've got my red paint and I'm gonna put two dots, one at 12 and one at six, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. Great. And how's yep. that look? That's a really good amount of paint. Perfect. Okay. And I'm gonna put it fairly close to the red circle, right? Yeah. Think about there. Yep, that looks perfect. Oops. Oh, it's a little tiny, that's okay. So you know where you've got your location perfect. Mm -hmm. So it just means that the paint just didn't stick to where it should have for some okay. reason. So it might be a tool size issue. I might get you to change your tool size, but okay. yeah, just add a little bit of paint and see. I might have to put glasses on for this one, you guys. <laughs> oh, you're perfect, okay. absolutely perfect. And then we're gonna spin it around. Yeah, So we're working at 12 again. Exactly. And then re-dip. Oh, re-dip, okay. Yep, and I need a little bit more paint, so re-dip again. And what I'll do is for the next colors, I'll give you a different tool that'll give you a little bit more. Actually, no, that one will probably still be good. Yep, that's a little still bit good. more. Or that? No, I think that looks good. Okay. Okay, so I remember now um, we're gonna do. So that was color one, two, three, four, five. Exactly. It's gonna be our next, yes. and I'm gonna rotate this so I'm always working at twelve. Mm -hmm. Now this paint is a little bit thicker, so this teal paint is a, quite a bit thicker than the red. 
Um, so it's possible that it might give you slightly larger dots. It might give you a little bit less. So, okay. Um, that's the hard part, right, is they don't all behave equally. <laughs> so, you know what, I can see here that this line intersecting is not in the center of the circle. Okay. But that's a really good question because that's going to happen a lot. Mm -hmm. It happens to me all the time. This is a moment where I have to tell myself, then the guidelines don't matter oh. as far as the bisecting. Okay. Right? If we think of them less as guidelines and more of points as points of reference, okay. then we're okay. okay. Because what this can now do is that straight line can be a point of reference for you to make sure that you're spacing this one correctly too. Okay. So focus more about, about halfway between those two red dots than where that guideline okay. is. Okay. Kind of always have the guidelines there is in the background, but don't live and die by them. Perfect. And about there. Yep. And redo. Perfect. Lovely. Good. Yep, looks good. This is fun. So then halfway between red and teal. Yep. Is yellow? Yep. You got it. Okay. So I'm gonna rotate, make my own new. And now you're just literally dividing those spaces in half. This is really um, very relaxing. Yay. It's kind of a zen kind of activity, I can see that. I'm so glad that that's how you feel. Okay, so your first row is done. Yes. So now what you're going to do, just to kind of see the idea is we'll get you to place that first dot like I did there. Okay. So you are going to go with, we're gonna give you a two, so okay. this end. Mm -hmm. And then when you place your pink dot, you have a decision to make. Which direction do you want your spiral to go in? Looking at this piece, I can choose to place the next row of dots whichever way I want mm -hmm. to align them. So if mm -hmm. I had aligned them this way instead of this way, that would have had my spiral going the opposite right. direction. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna keep going this way and have the pink over the purple, the pink between the pink and the purple, mm -hmm. or you can have it here between the pink and the red. So it's gonna just change the direction mm. of, of your spiral. I kinda like this clockwise kind of. Okay, so then you're gonna do, uh, with the size two tool, you'll do the same thing, doing 12 o'clock and six o'clock again. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna use these two dots here as your main points of reference. Okay. We don't care about any of the other guidelines right now. This one can be a little bit of one, but not really. We wanna get this as close to in between those two as we can and not stuffing it down in there too tightly together. Okay. We wanna leave a little bit of space so that this next one is still its own distinct row. Mm -hmm. It's not interlocked in there. All That's right. Good. good. How do you feel? I feel good. Yeah, I so does good. it all make sense? You feel like we can just start going? I think so. Okay, I so what so. we'll do then is then, um, I'll help you with the tool sizes, I'll help you with the colors when you need to, but I'm gonna paint alongside you and then we'll get the design done and see how, how quickly we can get through it. Okay, perfect. It's done. It looks so good. Are you oh, happy? I'm so happy. This was so much fun. Yay, I'm I so loved glad. it. Thank you for showing me how to do this. You're welcome. We're not done yet. Though. We're not done yet. That's no. right. We gotta put some gold. We gotta add some bling. So, are you ready to add a little gold detail? Let's do it. Okay. Perfect. So Jamie and I had so much fun making our mandalas and we talked so much that we ran out of time. So although I think it looks absolutely gorgeous the way it is, there is one more final touch and that is applying the gold dots. 
When you add something like this to a piece like this, it's really gonna pop. We don't wanna take up a lot of the space in between. We wanna make sure there's still a lot of the black background showing through, mm -hmm. uh, but it's just enough that's gonna add a little bit of bling that'll just kind of take your breath away. I'm so excited. So yeah. the idea is we're gonna put teeny tiny little gold dots around the colored dots and then go out? Exactly. Yeah. So we're going to start with really small ones and then we're going to gradually increase our tool size as we move out towards, towards the edge to gradually make those gold dots a little bit bigger. Um, the hard part with one of these spirals is just following the circles. So we're going to take our time and make sure we kind of get it in there, but once you get going, it stands out and you'll be able to see it nice Perfect. and easy. And what tools are we going to use? So we each have four different nail dotting stylus tools. They're all about the same size. Mm -hmm. So we have one that is a micro dotter tool, one that is a straight tool, one that has a really small little metal ball on the end, and one that has just a slightly bigger metal ball on the end. So the nice thing about doing this is that you can change the size of the dot, not just by changing your tool, but by changing the amount of paint that you have on the tool. So each of these tools, we're actually gonna be able to use them for two or three rows each and still be able to change the dot size without having to be constantly changing tools. Sounds good. Yeah. So these are pretty tiny little dots. Do you think yes. I'm gonna need my glasses for this one? I would, I would almost <laughs> guarantee it. <laughs> okay. okay, so with this, we're gonna do dip and dot, dip mm -hmm. and dot, just like when we were doing the spiral design, okay. making sure we're cleaning off the tool every two or three dots. Just taking a small amount of paint for now, and then you're literally gonna go right in between two of the dots in that first row around the center circle. All right, okay. I got it. I'm excited. And that's it, my last dot. It looks beautiful. Jamie looks so good. Are you happy? I am so happy with it. I think it. we should lift them up for just okay. a little second. So we need to wait for it to dry before we can put resin on. Yes. Um, and we had a couple little touch-ups that we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to make sure that that dries completely before we put the resin on. Right. So it should be about a half an hour, 40 minutes maximum mm -hmm. uh, before it's dry and ready to go. And then we'll come back and resin. All right. I can't wait to see the resin on this. I know. The colors are going to pop. Okay. Yep. So let's let these guys dry. Perfect. Okay. All right, Jamie, so you ready to resin? I'm ready. Awesome. So what I did was went onto the Art Resin website. I went to artresin.com slash circle, and we have a circle calculator there. So these are eight inch panels. So I punched in eight inches, and the calculator let me know that we need two ounces to cover this piece. So we've got two, uh, so we need four ounces altogether. So that's two ounces of resin and two ounces of hardener for a total of four ounces. All right, so should we go ahead and measure and mix? Perfect. Awesome. All right. So what uh, Jamie and I are going to do is we're going to dome our piece. So what that means is we're only going to apply resin to the very top um, of our piece. We're going to leave the sides uh, unresined. Now, if you wanted to, you certainly could resin the sides as well, but what you'll um, probably want to tape the back, and that's going to prevent uh, drips from accumul accumulating on the bottom. Uh, and you'll also want to put your piece up on a stand to avoid it uh, getting stuck to your table. Okay, but we're gonna just dome it so we don't need to put it on stands. And again, it doesn't matter if you measure your resin first or your hardener, we just want two ounces of each and we're gonna mix it up for three minutes. All right, we'll give it a stir. Okay, so we're gonna scrape the sides and the bottom as we stir, and that's gonna ensure that every little bit of resin and hardener are mixed together. Because if there's anything left uh, on the sides that's not mixed in, when you pour, you're gonna end up with sticky spots in your resin from the uncured resin and hardener. And just one more note too, there's a couple little paint smudges. I've got one here, Jamie has a little purple smudge there. So that's another advantage of doming. Um, we can put the resin on top and then afterwards we can touch up uh, with black paint or if you want, you can use gold paint. That would look really nice as well with mm -hmm. the gold dots. So lots of options there for you. Right. How are we doing there with the resin? I think we are good. Awesome. So let's do this. 
I have to make sure that I don't pour too much <laughs> and make sure I leave some for you. God, that's always satisfying, isn't it? Yeah. And you probably do want to pour the full, like, two ounces because, one, we're not covering the sides, so there's probably a little right. more in there um, okay. than we might need. Okay, so I poured just a little over an ounce. No, oh, just a little under an ounce. There we go. Yeah, always better to start with a little less than you think you need. Oh my gosh, you're right up to the edge. You're a little braver than I am. I'm gonna use this little spatula and nudge the, uh, the resin right to the edge here. I'm tempting fire for sure. <laughs> now, if you don't have a spatula like this, you can use a plastic takeout knife as well. That works really well too. And Art Resin has got such a beautiful viscosity that really it, it just stays where you want it to go. So you can nudge it right up to the edge and it'll hold, hold in place. Now, when you're doming, you certainly can tape off the bottom if you wish, just for a little extra insurance. But after you've been doming for a little bit, you kind of get a good feel for it and you don't really need to tape anymore. I just love how the colors are popping even more now. Okay, so I'm okay. done nine, and Jamie, how's yours looking? It looks pretty good. I think it is ready for a torch. Excellent. So let me grab our torch here. Got a little bald spot there, so I'm just gonna make sure that's good. There we go. So we'll just give it a quick pass, just to get rid of any of those bubbles. That's so satisfying. It is. Do you want me to do yours? Sure. Okay. There's lots of bubbles there for you. So we're ready now to cover it and wait 24 hours and then it's going to be ready for the wall. After we sign it. Always, always, always sign your work. Right. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Okay. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, Jamie, you ready for the reveal? I'm ready. All right. Here they are. Oh my gosh. They look absolutely perfect. I cannot get over how much the color pops after putting a layer of resin on it. Yes. It's, it's spectacular. They look so good. And you and did a beautiful job. Thank you. You know what, when you, I first saw your work, I thought there was no way that I could do this, <laughs> but I did, and it looks fantastic. So thank you so much for showing me how. You're most welcome. Thank you for inviting me to come. This has been great. I've had so much fun here. Me too. Yeah. I hope you guys found this valuable. Don't forget to follow Jamie on all her platforms at Mandela Love Affair. Yeah, right? That's and nice. if you have any questions or comments below, please leave them for us. And uh, don't forget to hit subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.